lot of tea. Did you tell them yet? No, I don't know how to talk to them guys. So I want to know more. They talk they about it. Foreign, they got a foreign language. y'all I think it's page page six you gonna get it <laughs> I want to know more about my Lord good to see you good to be in the Lord's house what a good day the weather's perfect uh, we got everything we need we're ready to go all right intro maestro you get an intro there Perfect. Wild, wild. All right, run it on up to an F. <laughs> you don't get this everywhere. While traveling through this world of sorrow, I'm on my way to glory land. Well, I'll not turn back for some tomorrow. My trial here, I understand. Sing it now. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive. I mean to go there someday, somehow, after I reach that heavenly city, I'm going to know more than I know now. Wait, hold it a minute. Let me find my place. Quick learner. Yeah, I said page six, didn't it? Maybe is it not page six? Is it not on the not on the screen? Hey! <laughs> well, I hate that. I'm sorry. Sing on the last. He promised one. No. Yeah, he promised one. You don't get this everywhere, and you said, thank God. Thank God. All right. All right, folks, sing with us now. He promised when his soul ascended, I'm coming back. The Lord did say, if on his promise you depended, all the wings of love will 
soar away. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to see as my reward. I want to know more about that homeland. Well, I mean to go there someday, somehow. And after I reach that heavenly city, I mean to know more than I know now. Get them started, you can't get them to quit, can you? <laughs> How about the ushers coming? We'll come for this evening's offerings. Is this tithes and offerings? Or? Yes. Caleb goes to Caleb Saunders. And you know he needs, you look at him, he needs all the help. <laughs> uh, when I come in, uh, Garrett and Johnny was out there and I shook hands with them. And Roger always uh, mentioned uh, Brother Lockley and those that would be coming to preach or something like that, cold hands. So I said, come here, Caleb, I'm going to check your hands. Cold hands, brother, cold hands. Bless his heart. He's ours, thank God, and we love him. We praise God for the work that they do, for the mind they have, for the life that they've lived. Amen. Praise God. So you give as the Lord's blessed, and uh, things will just be taken care of. And we'll, uh, we'll be a good part of this ministry. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family. Oh, the family. You might notice, you will notice, we say brother and sister around here. It's because we're a family and these folks are so when one has a heartache, then we all share the tears and rejoice in each victory in this family so dear. Would you pray for us? Sing the second verse from the door of an orphanage to the house of a king. No longer an outcast, a new song I sing. From rags unto riches, from the weak to the strong. I'm not worthy to be but what?
sing for us first, then Caleb will come up after that. So give him a hand as he comes to sing for us tonight. It's always good to come home, yeah. see family and friends. Uh, I, I wrote this song, I sang it if you guys were here uh, when 11th Hour was here about a month back, maybe a couple weeks, um, but I was a little sick. But Amber usually plays it for me, um, and I, I kind of threw Shannon under the bus just a couple hours ago. She ain't never played it, and that's the first time she ever heard it. And it's kind of sad when you write the song and you can't help her out very much. So uh, we called Amber, and Amber tried to help us out, but we're going to do our best. I'll sing a couple and get out of the way and let Caleb do his thing and talk to you guys tonight. Sit on the table right next to his bed. His favorite words, they were written in red. Some pages were torn, it had a front faded title. So special to me, my daddy's old Bible. Oh, sweet memories I close my eyes and see him down on his knees Not sure what he was saying But he must have been praying for me Well, I am now reading the same words he read the more that I see them, the more I am fed. That cover still holds that same faded title. Oh, it changed my life, my daddy's old Bible. Oh, sweet. Close my eyes and see him down on his knees. Not sure what he was saying, but he must have been praying for me. This book I'll soon pass on to my only son. I have only one prayer, his soul will be one. This Bible will guide him and help him to grow. So one day the Savior, he'll come to know. And oh, sweet memories, I close my eyes and see him down on his knees sure what he was doing, but he must have been praying for me. It sits on the table right next to my bed. My favorite words, they are written. familiar markers 
of the mercies I have known. And I know it may sound simple, but it's more than a cliche. There's no better way to tell you than to say God's been good in my life. And I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. And though I know I've had some hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could. Because through it all, been good The times we played and I can see that I've cried some bitter tears but I felt his arms around me as I face my greatest fears you see I've, I've had more gains and losses and I felt more joy than hurt. And as His grace rolls down to me, I deserve for God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. Though I know I've had some hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could. Cause through it all, God's been good. For God has been my Father, my Savior, and my friend. His love was my beginning. And his love will be my end well, I could spend forever trying To tell you everything he is But the best way I can say it Is this God's been good in my life I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night though I know I've had some hard times I wouldn't change them if I could just through it all singing good dad Caleb tonight uh, you'd be praying for him as he shares uh, the ministry that God's laid on his heart give him a hand as he comes tonight to speak to us you want to lapel mic? I appreciate the singing it's always good uh, to hear my brother sing and use his talents for the Lord uh, but while I was sitting there listening to Garrett sing I I was looking around at the crowd and I realized I should have got up this morning and announced that there was going to be free food after the service tonight, and I would have doubled the attendance immediately. Um, but uh, it's good to be here tonight. It's good to be able to speak, and I know when you step behind this pulpit that you have some big shoes to fill. So I want to thank Pastor Will for letting me speak and share with you what the Lord is doing in my life and uh, the calling he has uh, laid on my heart. And uh, by the way, the view is uh, much different from up here than it is out there. Um, so uh, when thinking about uh, the preachers and the messages uh, that have come from this pulpit right here, um, I feel privileged to, to be standing here tonight. Yeah. And uh, most of you know me. I'm Caleb Saunders, the youngest son of Johnny and, and Debbie Saunders. Uh, Miss Gail is my grandmother. Um, Miss Helen Burgess and, and Bill Burgess are my grandparents as well. Um, but as I've grown up in this church, I went to SEA 
K2 through 12th grade. All my life, I participated in competition for 12 years and was basically here every time the doors were open and many times when the door wasn't open. And uh, I guess you could say I had a, a drug problem because I was always being drugged to church. Um, but I'm thankful I still haven't gotten over that. Um, but I would guess there's not many who have played or, or watched more Crusader ball games than I have. I played from Little Crusaders all the way up, and when I wasn't playing, I was watching my brother play or my father and mother coach some sport. I was, every, I was in everything Mr. Skiles would let me be in. I was in choir, men's ensemble, drama, and I have great memories of the fine arts programs here at school. And under the leadership of Mr. Skiles, I learned that patience and long-suffering are overrated. Um, I'm just kidding. I, I love Mr. Skiles to death, but... I was, a, I was in student government in my class as a chaplain for several years, and uh, my first job was even right here on this campus. I started at the top. I was hauling trash and cleaning out the school trash cans on Saturdays. Uh, but besides my house, there's no place uh, that I've spent more time at my entire life than right here on this campus. And so I tell you all of that to say I'm a product of First Free Will Baptist Church in Sethner. And this place has invested in me, and I can say uh, that my family has invested a lot of themselves into this place. I'll be honest with you, in all of my time here, I, I've never pictured myself standing behind this pulpit. I'll say God has a sense of humor, um, but I'm thankful that his ways are above our ways, and his thoughts are above our thoughts. And I'm thankful for him working his plans in my life and giving me a calling to ministry. Anyways, there isn't a Sunday that uh, goes by that someone here in church doesn't ask me or stop me and say, Caleb, what are you doing now that yeah. you've graduated and right. uh, now that you're back home? And so tonight I'm going to share a little bit about my story and what I'm doing now and uh, some doors the Lord has opened up for me. Uh, in May, I graduated with my undergrad from Welch College with a double major in theology and Christian ministry. And cr my Christian ministry degree covered three areas. It covered pastoral, missions, and youth and family. And at first, this was not my intended plan for my life. I didn't even want to be in the ministry. Uh, my first few years of college, I just kind of wondered. I started off as a business major, and I wasn't good at math, so I realized that wasn't a good fit. And so I switched over to the exercise science uh, program, and that seemed better because I saw a cute girl, and her, her name is Madison, and uh, that is my girl from now, so I guess that worked a little bit. But it still didn't feel like that was where I needed to be. And during this whole time, I'd been serving at the Nashville Men's Rescue Mission, and the Lord was working on me. <clears throat> and I began my real, to realize my worst fear was beginning to happen, and I felt the Lord begin to call me into the ministry. And please understand, I have the utmost respect for those in ministry, but I've also seen firsthand how tough it can be. Uh, I see all the things that go along with it, uh, with being a pastor or being in the ministry. Uh, such as stress, long hours, uh, not being able to please everybody, and just the baggage that goes along with it. And I think I heard Pastor Will say amen. <laughs> but I feel that most pastors, they're not appreciated for what they do. Amen. And because of that, I couldn't see myself in the ministry. And let me uh, say something. Don't take for granted this man or the pastors on staff. And so I began to wrestle with the Lord over that, and he began to change my heart. And I remember Dad always telling me and teaching me, for all the negatives in ministry, there are so many more positives. Amen. And so going into my junior year, I, was, uh, I, I answered the call into ministry, and, it, and I changed my major. And immediately the door uh, was opening. The Lord started opening uh, some uh, doors up for me, and I was able to preach in uh, different areas around Nashville. And I'm thankful for the Lord's hand uh, while in college. I had parents that fasted and prayed for me and supported me in every way. And listen, it's a time when uh, you as a young adult, you're going to find out who you are in college. Uh, you're going to find out what you're made of. You're going to find out who you want to be. It's a time of critical choices in your life. And parents, yes, your children, uh, they might be out of the house, but there's never a time they need you more. And if you're not still feeding into them, uh, somebody else will be. And so you need to call your kids. You need to send them letters. Uh, you need to go visit them as much as you can and reinforce them, remind them who they are and where they came from. And I'm thankful that my parents set the bar high. 
Uh, and so my junior year and senior year, I took many ministry classes and began to grow in the Lord and uh, began to pray about the direction he would have me go. Doors opened up for me to work at the college and speak at camps, speak at conferences and different events where we saw students get saved. Yeah. And so the Lord grew my faith greatly while I was at Welch College. This past fall, I started my master's degree online through Liberty University and began to pursue a Christian uh, degree in Christian apologetics, which simply stated is defending the faith. Yeah. And uh, I'll walk through that a little bit more later and, and talk about that in a minute. But this summer, I've also been busy with establishing a nonprofit ministry called Teamwork Missions. And it's something I'm very excited about. Now, I didn't realize all the work it took to start a nonprofit ministry. Uh, but one of my favorite verses in Ecclesiastes uh, 9 10 says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, yeah. do it with thy might. Yeah. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. And so I've been working hard trying to establish this, and uh, I've been laying the foundation to build upon. And we want to do everything with excellence for God's glory. Uh, but most of you know Dr. David Gibbs III from NCLL, right. and he's behind us 100%. He believes uh, we can be successful, and he's on our board of directors. Uh, him and his staff have taken care of all of our legal documents, and uh, that has been a huge blessing. And so tonight I want to share with uh, you and cast my vision, teamwork missions, uh, to my church family. And please understand my vision is bigger than me, and it's a step of faith. And in some ways, I feel like Peter stepping out of the boat. But I trust 2 Corinthians 5, 7 that says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah. And I claim 2 Timothy 1, 7 that says, For God hath given, uh, not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Yeah. Amen. And I've committed to the Lord. I'll do my best to provide the grit if he'll provide the grace. And God gives us formulas for success in his word. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. And I'm thankful not in myself, uh, but through the Lord we can do things in boldness and with confidence that he will see us through. And then Joshua 3, 5 says, And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Yeah. And so... Uh, the vision of Teamwork Missions is a threefold ministry. Our primary focus will be short-term youth missions trips. We will lead these trips regionally across uh, the U.S. Churches and pastors or youth pastors, uh, they will partner with us uh, to take their groups to serve and be the salt and light we are called to be. We'll serve churches that need projects done. We'll do community outreach. We'll do service projects for the disabled or the elderly, veterans, or just people in need. And that can look many different ways. But it's easier to tell people about the love of Christ after you've shown them the love of Christ. Yeah. And we want to be a sustainable ministry that has long-term effects. And that's why we partner with local churches uh, so that they can follow up and continue to build those relationships with those we reach long after we're gone. Our partnership with churches gives us a base camp in these regional communities, a place to house our groups, a place to feed them a place uh, to have worship services. And these trips not only bless those we serve, but also gives us an opportunity to share Jesus. Yes. It opens door for young people in church groups to live out their faith, to be the hands and feet of Christ. And these trips act as a trigger to ignite the flame of a serving uh, to these students. And that I can say because I've experienced it. And when you get out of your comfort zone, it helps uh, you see things through a different lens and from a different perspective. And so these trips have a life-changing impact on those we serve and on those who serve. Our trips will include work, witnessing, and worship. Uh, and let me give you a statistic Brother Heath Ferguson, he shared with me a while ago. He told me a student who goes on a youth missions trip is 80% more likely to continue in their faith past college years. And please understand the impact of these trips can have. Uh, these trips encourage, engage, and equip students for a life of faith. And so the second area of teamwork missions that is something very exciting to me, um, and it's an area that sets us apart from other groups and other organizations. Uh, we'll be leading Christian heritage and history tours in Philly, Boston, and in D.C. 
Who in here understands that the faith of our founding fathers is quickly being forgotten and eroding Amen. away? Uh, atheist groups and other groups, they want to hide uh, the facts that were founded as a Christian Amen. nation under God. Uh, these important pieces of history and the biblical foundation of our nation is being swept under the rug. Amen. It's not accurately being portrayed in modern history books. And let us not forget what President Eisenhower said. The real fire within the builders of America was faith. Faith in a provident God whose hand supported and guided them. Faith in themselves as children of God. Faith in their country and its principles that proclaim man's right to freedom and justice. Washington said it's the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God and to obey his will. Justice David Josiah Brewer, Supreme Court Justice, 1889 through 1910 said, The American nation from its first settlement at Jamestown to this hour is based upon and permeated by the principles of the Bible. Historical facts are literally being erased and monuments yeah. removed from the public square all around the U.S. Yeah. One of the stops on our Philadelphia tour is at the Freedom Foundation, which gives home to some of these monuments. Uh, we'll be visiting historical sites and pointing out how the Christian faith played a role in people, places, and events. Uh, does anybody know the scripture engraved on the Liberty Bell? It comes from uh, Leviticus 25.10, and it says, Proclaim liberty throughout all the land and to all the inhabitants thereof. And Philadelphia at one point was our nation's capital yeah. and full of historical facts, sites, history, and covered by our Christian faith. In D.C. stands the Washington Monument, 555 feet tall. Inside the original cornerstone was placed the Holy Bible and a gift from the Bible Society, alongside a copy of the Declaration of Independence, and the U.S. Constitution. Now, there are other carved tribute blocks in the monument, some of them saying, holiness to the Lord, and in God we trust, and train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he shall not Amen. depart from it. And several other scriptures and religious sayings. There are literally hundreds of references to God, our creator, and divine providence around Washington, D.C. And Teamwork Missions, we want to shine light on these ignored and forgotten references to God and our Christian faith. Then Boston will take the Freedom Trail, also known as the Puritan Trail. Uh, the pilgrims were a, a people of strong faith. The sites and historical spots will uh, be King's Chapel and the Park Street Church. We'll visit the first public school in the settlement whose main textbook was the Holy Bible. Yeah. Now, now stop will be at the statue of Benjamin Franklin who said, God governs in the affairs of men. Yeah. Some tours will include a visit to Plymouth, uh, where we'll explore the national monument of our forefathers, which yeah. is a tribute to their faith and Christian heritage to those that founded our country. Yeah. Now, America's Christian heritage and history needs to be revisited and yeah. re-examined, and it needs yeah. to be taught to younger generations. Amen. Our country has forgotten who we are. Yes. Psalms 33, 12 says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom hath chosen him for his own inheritance. Ronald Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. Amen. And like Nehemiah in the Bible, uh, we need to rebuild some walls that have been torn down uh, in America, amen. And Teamwork Missions wants to be a part of retelling, rebuilding, and reminding people of our Christian his history and heritage. And so we have our youth missions trips. We have our Christian heritage and history tours, and we have the basic ministry of teamwork missions. I'll be preaching, teaching, and traveling, spreading the gospel, and defending our Christian faith. I want to put my studies in a Christian apologetics to use in all three areas of teamwork missions. As P 1 Peter 3.15 says, And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. I love the principle taught at, in Acts 10, 38, how Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good. And that's what we are striving for. And myself and the board, we have big dreams. We have big visions and big expectations. Uh, but God is able to do exceeding uh, abundantly above all we ask or think. And we want to live out 1 Timothy 4, 12 that says, Let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, yes, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. And so my calling is sure, sure, but it's something that can't be done alone. 
And so at the end of the service, I'll uh, share a little bit more of how you can be a part of this ministry. But tonight, I also want to share a thought from the scriptures. You can't get behind this pulpit and not share something from the scriptures. So I'll be brief and respectful of your time. Uh, but part of Teamwork mission statement is also our motto. And it's reaching in, reaching out, and reaching up. And I believe this can be a great pattern in each of our lives as we strive to honor the Lord. So if you have your Bibles, if you want to turn to Isaiah with me. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 6 will begin in uh, verse 1, and I'll jump around just a, a little bit, but Isaiah 6, 1. And it reads, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And now skip down with me to verse 5. And then said, I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Also I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people. In this passage, Isaiah has a vision, and he sees the Lord in all of his glory. And when we reach up and get the true vision of God's deity, we immediately realize our depravity. Uh, Isaiah reaches in and says, Woe is me. He realizes next to a holy God, that he is unclean. And church, we're all unclean in here. Yeah. We all can say like Isaiah, woe is me. Uh, then the voice of the Lord says, whom shall I send? And Isaiah, as unworthy as he felt, he reaches out and says, here I am, Lord, send me. Yeah. As Brother Ron uh, gets a song ready, um, I can tell you the Lord uh, is still calling people to faith tonight. Yeah, and he's still calling people to serve and he's still calling people to go. Yeah. And God is still calling for us to reach in, reach out, and reach up. And if you don't know the Lord tonight, uh, or you're uh, not living in a way that's pleasing to him, uh, these altars are a good place uh, to do business with the Lord. And I'll, I'll turn the invitation over to Pastor Will. Amen. Amen. Give him a hand. Thank you. Stand together. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Maybe you're here tonight, you have a need in your life, a burden. Prayer request that the Lord knows about. You want to be remembered in prayer. His heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You just slip your hand up by that saying, pray for me. I have a need tonight. Bless all the hands of this evening. How many of you have a loved one who's lost and away from the Lord? You want to remember them in prayer. Bless all the hands. Uh, we're going to have a word of prayer and uh, have a time of a altar service if you need to come and pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for Caleb. Thank you for God, what you're doing in his life. And Lord, I pray for each and every one here tonight, Lord, who uh, raised their hand for whatever reason it is. Lord, you know their heart. Uh, know the needs, know the, the, the people, the families that they're thinking of that are lost without you. I pray that you would convict them tonight, we pray, for it's in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing, if you need to come and pray, would you come? And sing. sing this old song. I will serve thee because I love thee. You have
speaking tonight now he's not finished so have a seat he's going to tell you a little bit uh, real quick about what they're doing and uh, then we'll be dismissed Come on. I'll be brief I, I shared a, a good bit with you already but uh, many of you were handed a pledge card when you came in tonight and if you didn't get one uh, if you could slip your hand up the ushers will bring you one um, and if you need a pen I'm sure they have one as well but if you could pull that out now if you have yours um, I'm going to tell you a little bit how you can help and partner with us. Yes. And we want to include, um, we want you to include your email on there or so we can uh, share with you um, what we'll mail out in our newsletter. Um, so Anybody, I saw some hands go up and then they went back down. Hold your hands up if you did not get a uh, copy. Got some up here. Right. Right. Any others? Right. And so we want to include you on our mailing list and on our email newsletter list, so please fill that information out. Um, but we need prayer partners, and this is a must. If you'll partner to pray, please check or initial um, the box there. And while you are filling this out, if they could get, if they could get the PowerPoint ready <clears throat> up there. Yeah, you can go on and hit, hit the next one, hit the next slide. Yeah, and um, so we did some training in the North American Mission Board at the SIN Network, and this is just some pictures of that. You can hit uh, the next slide. But just to recap, we are a nonprofit ministry offering short-term mission trips, Christian heritage and history tours, and preaching and doing outreach and ministry. And we will also be offering a combination of some of these trips. Um, our soft launch was back in June. And since then, we have been taking care of ministry and legal details. Uh, we've done some training, submitted papers to the North American uh, Mission uh, Board, and uh, we've been traveling, researching mission camp locations, and mapping out uh, some history tours. Um, but we've been building a website. Go check it out, teamworkmissions.com. And we've, so we've been busy. Um, you can go hit the next slide. Uh, but looking back to your cards now, we need you as partners. Uh, some are called to go, some are called to give, and uh, I will be operating as a home missionary, and uh, we'll need your prayers, so I hope you check that box, but I will also need financial support. Yeah. Uh, I'm raising support through donations, monthly support, and um, we accept uh, basically any form of donation. You can hit the next slide, uh, but no, no donation is too small or too big. I'm praying that some of you are heavy hitters, uh, but <laughs> all of you are important for our success. And as a product of this church, I feel this ministry is an outreach of this church. Yes, you can hit the next slide. So, so this week is our official hard launch. The website will be live and updated, and we'll start taking group reservations. And I'll be back in the back to answer any questions. So please turn in your cards at the back table or to the ushers. And if there's any extra cards, you can just leave them there. I'll pick them up later. But thank you for your support, and God bless. Amen. We appreciate that, Caleb. Uh, don't forget to turn in the cards. Where, where are you, you going to be in the table, or where do you want to have them? Yeah, we'll be in the table. All right, just turn them in the table out in the vestibule and make sure you drop them there. Don't forget to check out the, the website as well as on their uh, teamworkmission.com, uh, and they'll tell you a little bit more about that tonight. Let's give Caleb another hand tonight. Yes, appreciate right. him coming. I'm going to ask him to make his way out to the vestibule as well. Make sure you go by there and see them. Any announcements before we are 
dismissed. Next Saturday, not this coming, but next Saturday at 5 o'clock, 